What if one single AI tool could replace your entire SEO tool tech stack and probably do a better and smarter job while it's at it? If you're still using a lot of different SEO tools for different SEO tasks, you might be missing out on a lot of time and money. Stick around and I'll show you how Claude can actually do most of your SEO tasks, including keyword research, a full on-site SEO audit, and even competitor analysis. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect Claude with real-time SEO data using this particular MCP. And then I'm gonna show you three very useful use cases that you can start using today with Claude to improve your SEO or even your client's SEO today. There's a couple of things that we need to get this started, so let's get cracking right away. You're going to need to download Claude for desktop. You can do that on Mac or Windows. We're gonna be doing the Mac installation guide, by the way. You need to download Node.js, and obviously you need an account with data for SEO. These are gonna be our API or our data providers so that Claude can have access to real-time SEO data. You can sign up for data for SEO with the link below. You'll get a couple of free dollars credit, which goes a long way when you're using this. And they're also today's sponsor, so make sure you sign up with them below. Once you have those three things done, what you wanna do is open Claude. So I'm gonna open Claude here. And the first thing you need to do is go to the file, the settings. You're gonna have this window pop up. We're gonna to go to developer. You're not gonna have this data for SEO thing here. We wanna con edit config file. You need some sort of code visualization tool. You can get Visual Code Studio. And this is the file that we're going to uh, edit. We want to here edit with Visual Code Studio. You can download that as well, it's free. Now, when you open that, you're not gonna have this bit of code. If you have a little bit of code there, you want to delete it. In our community, in the installation guide for Claude and Data for SEO MCP, we have this bit of code that you can copy. You can take a screenshot of the screen and make sure you copy this code. Obviously, you do need to change a couple of parameters. Your Data for SEO username is the email you use to sign up for Data for SEO. And the password, well, you can get that in your account for Data for SEO. So once you've copied this entire thing, filled it out, obviously, you wanna go back to the IDE and paste that whole thing there and save it. That is it. You don't need to save it in a special location. It's already there. I've got this blurred out for security purposes, obviously. Once we're done with that, we want to go to Claude. We want to quit Claude and restart it again. And once we restart it, hopefully the main thing you want to look for is you don't have any error messages in the top right corner. If you don't, you should be all set. And now the magic starts happening. When we click on search and tools, if you go way down at the bottom, you'll see you have this new selection, which is data for SEO with a little 49 numbers. These are 49 different potential API data that you can call, giving Claude an incredible, powerfully, turning Claude into an incredible SEO tool. Now, before we get started, I'm gonna give you an expert tip to make things a lot more smoother and not so annoying. You're gonna to go to Claude, go to settings. You're gonna get this, you're gonna get this pop up once again. We're going to go to Claude settings and configure. Now, under integrations, you're going to scroll down and you're going to see out of all the integrations, the data for SEO local. We're going to click these three dots uh, and tools and settings. Now, by default, all these drop downs are going to be under always ask for permission. While safe, this gets extremely annoying and the data for SEO connection is extremely safe. So what you wanna do is just take two minutes to make sure that all these dropdowns are on always uh, allow unsupervised. So you don't need to continuously click yes, approve, approve, approve for the API connection. It just ruins your workflow. So you can see mine are all allowed now. You wanna make sure you do that. Now we're ready to go. We've got MCP for Data for SEO installed in Claude, and Claude has become our ultimate SEO tool. So let's go through the first use case. In our community, if I go to more SEO prompts, I also have all of these prompts that you can access. This is just gonna turn it into an absolute beast when it comes to on-site SEO, competitor analysis, and keyword research. The first one is on-site SEO. I'm going to copy this entire thing. And this prompt is telling Claude what it has access to and what I want it to do in this case, an audit for my website. 
So you can see here, I've got a couple of parameters. The one that I need to change or input is this one here, user target site. I'm going to use a random website here, or one that we've used a couple of times, Financial Advisor Pro, and then make sure that I've got Claude for Sonnet stored. You can do this with Opus, but I find that Opus has a limited amount of messages. I'm only on the plus version, $20 a month. I'm not paying $100 for this tool. You can see here that it's calling the data for SEO, one of the APIs, the on-page API, which it should because we are doing an on-page or on-site SEO audit. And why is doing an on-site SEO audit an important thing? If your on-site SEO is poor, it's like having, it's like trying to race in the Formula One with a Prius. Sure, you might get somewhere, but you're not gonna be very competitive. You need your on-site SEO to be spot on. And this is gonna help us to do that. This is gonna help us to understand what we're missing in our on-site SEO quite quickly, even the technical components, and then you can have a back and forth conversation to, for it to actually explain what these things mean. This can take me hours and days sometimes, depending on the complexity of the website and it's gonna have it done in a couple of minutes. Now, in that prompt, I have told it to give me the results in form of an artifact, because why not? Claude has a wonderful artifacts feature, giving you an incredible way to report and to understand this data a little bit more. If you don't want that, you can just tell it to tell, it, tell you what's wrong in a sentence format, but I prefer the artifacts, I'll show you what they look like. Okay, now the on-site SEO audit is done. It's got a pretty good overall score. Uh, I can see a couple of issues, technical content, the UX, uh, page size, this load time, core web vitals, metadata analysis. Let's expand this because it has access to the website natively and internet. It can also understand the contents of it. So it's given me uh, the suggested title, suggested description. Also the issue that is slightly long, for example. Uh, let's go to all other issues that it's found. Perfect. It's even given me a site health snapshot. Um, and again, even a plan that I can start following to improve this website's on-site SEO. Thankfully, this website's actually pretty good, but you get the idea. This is giving me actionable insights into what to do. And even giving me in a quick wins for the first two weeks, week three to six, week seven, week seven to 12. This already I could probably give to a client really quickly saying, hey, this is what we're gonna have to fix given the result of your data. Okay, if I look it in our prompts in our community, I've got a competitor analysis as well. I'm going to copy this entire thing um, and start a new conversation with Claude. I do recommend you start new conversations each time just because if you try to get it to do an analysis on that same conversation, as Claude does, you will reach the context window very quickly and it'll ask you to start a new conversation. That's one of the drawbacks of Claude, unfortunately. So I'm gonna start a new chat. I'm gonna paste this uh, prompt there and I just need to change a couple of things. If you don't know your competitors, I'd suggest that you do a little search. You wanna put target website yourself, competitor one, two, and three, and I'm going to hit okay and it should already know which API calls to make and everything else. If you're wondering how much this is costing from an API perspective, it's fractions of a cent, right? This costs very, very minimum. And it's also the good thing about data for SEO, it's pay as you go. Meaning if you don't use it, you don't pay for it. Now, why do we wanna do a competitor analysis? It can be the quickest way to understand what you need to do to outrank your competitors. And also it might uncover some strategies, sneaky little strategies that your competitors are doing that you weren't even aware of. So it's an extremely efficient way to find out how to outrank your competitors. And also if it's even gonna be possible. I now have a complete artifact telling me the SEO gap analysis. Why am my competitors doing better than we are or than any potential client you might have? You have target website, the competitors, and then the 90 day trend because we have access to estimated monthly search volume, how much traffic they're getting, the keyword trend. So how many keywords they have that are ranking in the top 10 really quickly and easy data to see. So Rhino roofers have 78 keywords in the top 10, for example, and the target website only has eight. Okay, we probably need to, you know, uh, get more ranking keywords. Not only that, it seems that the competitor are improving the amount of keywords. This is a bit of domain authority. 
tech performance, and then high opportunity keyword gaps. This is my favorite one of all this because it tells me right away and it's like my own custom SEO tool. It's fantastic. I really love it, but it gives me some opportunities. So roof companies near me, roof is near me, commercial roofing companies. It seems that my competitors aren't really getting into that. Fantastic high leverage keyword. Hip roof versus cable uh, roof. This is informational. I can probably write a blog post about that. Uh, commercial roofing repairs, commercial. That's a good one. That's a transactional keyword that if I rank for, I'm going to get some pretty good traffic. You get the idea. Already, it's given me an understanding of why they're doing better, but also what I can do to outrank them or find some opportunities. It gives me easy to understand examples of why, for example, Rhino Roofers or one of the competitors is winning. So they dominate high volume near me keywords with 643 total keywords and 83 top 10 ranking keywords. Their estimated search traffic is 12,000 per month. You get the idea why Steven uh, wins, why Belden wins, strategic plan. It starts telling me what I need to do, optimize existing pages for near me keywords, target comprehensive local landing pages. That's easy to do. And it even gives me a bottom line up front. I think this is the wonderful thing about this, where we know, or you know as well, how to collect SEO data, but putting that data into an actionable plan sometimes is very difficult. This solves that problem and also in a really nice looking way. And use case number three is the classic keyword research. Again, we have a prompt here. Now you might be wondering, well, all the prompts are inside the community. What if I don't wanna get there? Look, you don't really need the prompts. You can just have a conversation back and forth with Claude uh, asking what you want. For example, the prompts just make things a lot easier and look very nice and, fr and UX friendly. I'm gonna paste that here. What I do need to tell it is which keyword I wanna go for or which website I'm trying to rank. I'm gonna use again the Financial Advisor Pro. So the prompt is pasted in there and I'm gonna go with that's the website. So for that prompt, the input can either be the website you're trying to rank, it'll understand the keywords it should rank for, and or just give it some keywords and it'll find some similar keywords and you'll see it do the magic here at the moment. You do need to let it know if it isn't in the United States that you're trying to rank for, tell it that because it has access to look for keywords in a lot of different uh, locations around the world. If it doesn't have access to that, it'll tell you. Okay, let's check out our published keyword research document for Financial Advisor Pro. Total number of keywords, average search volume for those keywords and difficulty. Let's see what the what it is finding. So it's found 14 keywords that are commercial and five, I think, informational. Let's see, see what it's finding here. Advisory services. Oh, it's clustered those keywords together that it's going to uh, give me some recommendations on advisory services, planning services, industry, investment services, educational. Great. They uh, do financial advising. So let's take a look here. I mean, this is already kind of blowing my mind. I can cluster by advisory services, for example, that it found. So certified financial planner, financial consultant, financial planner, financial fiduciary, financial advisor. That's a keyword I didn't even look for. It's got difficulty a lot easier than the others. I mean, <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, what? Uh, let's go industry information, how to become investment services, wealth management. That's a, a service that I didn't really think about. So I can even, I didn't ask you to do this. I can clock, copy that to the keyboard. Or I can download the CSV file of that. This is kind of nuts. Okay. Let's see the keyword findings. Having all this data is all fun and looks cool, but like I said, it's often hard to join the data to actionable plans. So let's see what it's telling us to do. So the research reveals exceptional opportunities in the financial advisory space with certified financial planners showing massive search volume and a moderate keyword difficulty. Great. Already certified financial planner. That's something I can start targeting right away. And it's given me top pillar page topic comprehensive financial planning guide, how to choose a financial advisor, investment and wealth plan. Cool. And even quick wins, the action plan. So zero to three months, target low difficult keywords. For example, financial fiduciary, financial advisor, financial consultant, and how to become a financial advisor. And then I've got the three to six months and six to 12 months. I mean, 
It's simple, but it's effective. And I think that's the beauty about joining high quality data with a really smart model like Claude. For a lot of people, small businesses, even some small agencies, this is now your go-to SEO tool. It might be missing a couple of things, but remember, if you also write with Claude, you can now inject keyword data into your blog post, for example, or the copy for your services pages and things like that. It's just kind of unreal. Now you've given Claude the ability to become an absolute SEO expert and potentially replace all your other SEO tools. There's one thing that you need to know though, is that Claude hasn't been trained on how to rank for the AI search overviews. You're going to have to tell it that information. And if you wanna learn how to rank in the AI overviews, I recommend you watch this video here. It's gonna give you five strategies you can start using today to be able to use this and rank in the AI overviews today.